He shall what? Save it. Forget about yourself. Concentrate on him. And what God do, what he has to do for you. Then he finishes by saying, what man is advantaged if he gained the whole world or the immigration status and you lose God? Then he continues by saying, anyone who is ashamed of me, look at that, anyone who is ashamed of me, the son of God, anyone what, the son of man, anyone for whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words to tell others about it, him shall the son of man be also what? Ashamed. If you cannot tell people and introduce people or even give a flyer to somebody about your church, which is actually God's church, you are being ashamed of him. And he says, if you are ashamed of me because what you sow is what you reap, I will also be ashamed of you to introduce you to angels to bring your parcels. I will be ashamed to tell the home office release their paper. You see, I'm coming somewhere to teach you something about immigration status. Why do you want immigration status? Why? To travel every Sunday. God knows it. That's why it doesn't come. Until you make a vow, not a promise. That when the paper comes, you will use it for kingdom purposes. God knows your heart more than everybody else. People, we didn't come here to eat beggar. When the precious, our precious white companions came to Africa, they came with three things. Because man is made up of three dimensions. The spirit, the soul, and the body. So our precious white folk, when they came to Africa, they brought the spirit, church. Then they brought what would deal with our soul, education. Then they brought what would deal with our body, hospitals. What are we here for? Ask every typical black man why they came to London. Stomach direction. Stomach direction. And it's still stomach direction to today. Still stomach direction to today. To today. When was the last time any of you invited a white man to this church? God has brought one here. God brought himself. Him, he, he brought him. When was the last time you spoke to a Chinese or another color? When was the last time you told somebody about your lover? Because that's, the, that's what I told you from the beginning. I warned you. Don't look at me that way. I warned you from the beginning. When I said, do you love God? And you raised your I told you. I will show you you are lying. Already you know you are, we are all liars here. To a certain extent. <laughs> love for God is proved in love for people. Now, I'm coming to show you something where when you, look, when you really love your wife, you know when you meet people who are friends of yours, when they don't ask you who is this, you go ahead and you say, Shelly. Shelly, right? <laughs> Shelly. Even the way you say it, you're, you see, If you are ashamed to mention my name, how can I announce your name to your supervisor to promote you? You can't mention Jesus. You can't, if you don't mention Jesus, mention what he has done for you without mentioning his name. Now, you can't even tell somebody all the years what he has done for you till today. You haven't been able to tell one person. And I should tell other people about you for them to pay, pay you or give you immigration status. Who, who you think I is? I'm showing you the underlining cause of delays to answer to prayer. When I'm preaching, I mention one particular person's name more than any other. God, Jesus, my wife, my children. Why? Why don't I mention your son? I don't know them. I'll mention them once in a while, but we are not in love. You mention your lover more. Even people in my notes, I hope I'll get there. When you love somebody, you even come to a place where when you're even going to marry, you take on double barreled name to take on the, the husband's name plus your own and make it double barreled. Eh? Why? You love. Where is Jesus' name? Where is Jesus' plans in your plans this year? Where is his name? With double barreled plans, do you, do you know the date of your church's anniversary? Do you know the date of the programs of your church? Is it in, is it in your diary? This is your lover's church. Do you know the dates of your church's program? You love God. Love for God is demonstrating love for people being introduced to his house. Do you know?
know the date of the anniversary of your church. Have you any plans at all to even be there? Or it's summer, so you'll be wearing clothes in Barbados. And yet you say you love God. He doesn't think so. To many believers across the globe, he doesn't believe so. So let's get back to the root. Left me alone, I won't preach this. He told me, preach it. You can run, go and hide anywhere. God will find you. And if he loves you much, he'll bring you here. It's not punishment. He'll bring you to sit down here. Each week, where is God in your plans? Where is God? How come you have not prayed for anyone else other than yourself? Your prayer closet is littered with your name and all your needs. Most of you actually wants. How come you have not introduced anyone to the person you love or nurtured them? Or even bothered to find out who you introduced here and why they didn't come back? Did he go on your knees to pray for them to return? Listen to this. The Jesus you don't introduce is the Jesus you don't know or are ashamed of. The Jesus you don't introduce to anybody is the Jesus you are ashamed of or don't know. You only introduce people you know and love. So if you are not introducing him to anyone, either through testimonies or what he has already done in your life, now, are you ashamed of him? Because Jesus is supposed to be your first love, not your husband, not your wife, not your miracle baby, not your job, definitely. Your girlfriend is not number one. God is number one. That's thing we need to return back. The church is full of people who don't love God. I told you last week, tell me any one of you who has spent one hour just praising God without asking him for zero. It's zilch. As soon as God sees you coming, he knows your list before you mention it. He knows it. You have a history. He knows the list. I mean, before you open your mouth to say, hey, baby, Joe, he mentions it to you. He said, I heard it the other day. Have you added anybody to my house to qualify for what you are asking? Because immigration status is given to people who expand kingdom in the state and nation in which they want the citizenship. That's right. That's right. Immigration status is only given to people who propagate the kingdom. Amen. Are you all here? They don't give you, when you're going on holidays to anywhere, there's a reason. Tourist visa, immigration visa, working visa. Look at the immigration, look at the past visa sheet. They don't just, where are you going? Ghana. Free. Whether we know where you're coming from or not, whether you're a terrorist or not, you can come. The, the reason why on that sheet, there are things you tell them, whether you like it or not, there's something you must tick. Which, which, which? Which one are you ticking for what you're asking God? The miracle baby. Even now. Even now. Look at you. What you do. How you approach church. And you're asking for a baby. When the baby comes. Even Jesus will do him sete. When your husband comes. Now. Pastor, you must understand. I found a new baby. The reason reason why I was coming there was because I had something from that I needed from God. And I've got to, what's all this about membership? What's membership? I came to buy takeaway. <laughs> I was going to shout. God yearns. I just heard. He yearns for intimacy. Abba. God yearns for intimacy, relationship. Look, let me.
me tell you my daughter's secret. Maybe you can employ it. Every time my daughter sees me, one kind word or the other, Daddy, I collapse. I love you, Daddy. My next question is, what do you want? <laughs> now, she didn't come saying, I want something. No. She just came expressing how much she loves me. And just by what she said, I was willing to do anything. Some of you wives, if only you will learn some secrets. There are some things your husband will do for you without asking. When your husband say, lie down, lie down. <laughs> I'm not saying when they tell you to do something foolish. When your husband say, lie down, lie down, sit down, sit down, keep quiet, keep quiet. They will write you a check that will shock your nose. <laughs> no, I'm here to I'm here to see my wife ask me something and me delay in answering. I'm yet to do it. Now that's a human being. How much more the heartbeat of God?